Hi everybody, this is Tom Passero, and what we're going to do now is walk through a couple problems from problem set two in your textbook, and these have to do with inventory management techniques. These problems are very similar to the ones that you'll be doing in your problem set one uh, for the class. What we're going to do is show you how to compute something called EOQ, Economic Order Quantity, and I'm taking this directly from the textbook. This is page 420 and 421, problem set two, number two, and I'll read the intro for you. Mr. Busfield recently completed a course in logistics management and now realizes that there are significant costs associated with ordering and maintaining inventory at his distribution center. Mr. Busfield has learned that the EOQ is the replenishment logic that minimizes these costs. In an effort to find the EOQ for measuring cups, Mr. Busfield has gathered relevant data. Mr. Busfield expects to sell 44,000 measuring cups this year. Hogan acquires the measuring cups for $0.75 cents each from Shatter Industries. Shatter charges $8 for processing each order. In addition, Mr. Busfield estimates his company's inventory carrying costs to be 12% annually. Okay, so what Mr. Busfield wants to do is use a formula that minimizes costs and determines how much he should order when he runs out of a particular product, which in this particular case is measuring cups. Now what you need to do, hopefully you'll do this before you watch this video, is to read about the EOQ. And in this particular chapter, I've only uh, focused on specific uh, uh, techniques because it can get pretty, pretty uh, dramatic. And all I want you to do is learn just a couple of things. You Feel free to learn as much as you can, but in terms of what the requirements are, the first one is to be able to compute the basic EOQ, economic order quantity. And like I said, this is a uh, derived formula that attempts to minimize all the costs involved in ordering a product and carrying inventory on that product. So what you have is the following data you have and this is directly from the the problem you have expected demand we're going to call that d of 44,000 measuring cups each cup costs 75 cents when you order a number of these cups it costs eight dollars to do so and then when you carry the inventory, in other words, the inventory that is not being sold, but rather is in the stock room, the distribution center, wherever, we have estimated that to be 12 cents per unit. Okay, and as you, if you read the text, carrying costs and ordering costs uh, are comprised of several things, but specifically carrying costs have to do with insurance, obsolescence, and so on. Carry, ordering costs could be the the creation of a purchase order, the the process in that order, and so on. So what we have here is basically just putting in numbers into a formula. So in order to determine the EOQ for the measuring cups, and we're making an assumption that he accepts ownership of products upon the arrival. And now, that may not make much of a difference in this particular case, but what that means is that he is not paying the freight for the freight or if he's paying for the freight it's somewhere in this unit cost uh, number so he's not worried about the freight all he's concerned about is getting the right amount to his uh, dock alright freight's taken out of it so what does he do he plugs it into this formula and this is what the formula looks like the EOQ equals the square root of 2 times the cost to place an order times the annual demand and that is all divided by the inventory carrying cost times the unit cost alright so we plugged in the numbers 
and we have 2 times the ordering cost which is $8 times the demand which is 44000 all that is divided by the inventory carrying cost of 12 cents times the unit cost for the cups 75 cents each we continue to do the math and now we have 704,000 over 0 0.09 we do this equation and we divide this into the 704,000 and we take the square root of that and then what that comes up with is 2797 cups 2797 cups that is the EOQ or the economic order quantity that Mr. Busfield will use given the situation he's not worried about the freight to, in order to minimize the costs now he may run it up roll it up to 2800 uh, he may have to roll it up to maybe even 3000 depends on container costs and and how much he can take into his warehouse or distribution center uh, but it gives him an idea of a quantity that's going to help him minimize cost okay so we've done part A, yeah, part A, but now we have to do part B. And part B requires a little more, uh, many more, a few more calculations. What does part B ask us to do? I'll read it. Now assume Mr. Busfield must arrange for inbound transportation of the measuring cup since Hogan accepts ownership of the products at the supplier's shipping point. Quantities of fewer than 4,000 measuring cups cost five cents per unit to ship. Quantities of four thousand above cost four cents per unit to ship. Determine the differences in total costs associated with an EOQ of four thousand units and the EOQ level found in part A when transportation costs must be considered. Okay, so what are we talking about here? Well, apparently he has options. I'm talking about Mr. Busfield uh, because now he has to take into consideration not only his economic order quantity, which you figured out in Part A, 2797, but also the fact that there is a way to save some money by ordering quantities of 4,000 and above. And where he's going to save that is what we're going to try to figure out right here. I've copied the information from part from the the, the problem got the demand, the unit cost, the ordering cost, and the carrying cost. And now we have to do a few calculations and compare them from one EOQ to another EOQ. The original EOQ of 2797 and this other EOQ of 4000, because it says so right here, that will help us hopefully save some money based on the some of the ways we have to do the cost and we're going to see that right now. So let's first uh, explore what these costs are. There are three costs we, with which we have to be involved. We've already discussed two of them. Inventory carrying costs and ordering costs. But we're also going to add what we call transportation costs in here. And a great uh, series of pages to look at are pages 152 and 159 to 160 where it breaks this down pretty nicely it even shows you how to do it but I'm going to show you how to do it as well okay let's look at inventory carrying costs inventory carrying costs equal average inventory times unit cost times the inventory carrying cost per unit alright well first of all you have a new uh, uh, variable here it's called average inventory and if you were to go to these pages, you would find that average inventory, by definition, is the economic order quantity divided by 2. Now, if you were to go to that page, and let me kind of draw something here, you'll see that inventory, and it's just a perfect thing, kind of shoots up when you have the order that comes in, and then you gradually use it over time, right? you get the new order in and it gradually used over time new order in and so on and so forth well the thing about this is it's in a perfect world so at one point you get all the inventory and you gradually use it until you're down to zero then magically the new order comes in 
and that's not always the case but for the purposes of what we want to have average inventory what has been defined this average inventory is that little point right here it kind of goes in the middle so this is your average inventory at any time and that's what we've done here so we've taken the EOQ basically which is this this number here everything's perfect and we just divided it in half over time it's the average inventory all right so let's get rid of this all right so first thing we have to do is take our EOQ and divide it by 2 which you've done here which is your average inventory multiply that by the unit cost which is right here 75 cents and then multiply that by the inventory carrying cost per unit which is the 0.2 or 12 cents all right you do that and you come up with $125.87 let's look at for the EOQ of 4000 all right so we use the same formula we take the EOQ divided by 2 for our average inventory multiply that times the unit cost and times the inventory carrying cost per unit and you do that and you come up with 180 so right there you're thinking wow this costs even more well of course it costs more because you're carrying what less inventory and less inventory hand <coughs> excuse me will have an impact on this particular number right because you you're not uh, worried about that much in terms of insurance obsolescence and so on so this is, of course is going to be a higher number because your order quantity is higher let's move on to ordering costs and excuse me demand ordering costs equals demand over the EOQ times the ordering costs itself all right this is probably better if I say ordering cost per unit or per order now there we go all right so what you have here is another equation and really this what this says is if I take my annual demand and I divide it by the order quantity that I usually use when I do place an order what you have here is what you call uh, orders per year all right so this little part of the equation is the orders per year and it makes sense this is what I expect to use this is what I'm going to be placing an order quantity for every time I need an order and you have a certain amount of orders uh, per year and I kind of did that calculation even though it's not right here I just basically divided this into this and it's 15.7 days just uh, uh, rounded down all right so I take this 15.7 days I multiply it by 8 which is the unit cost per order or excuse me the ordering cost uh, per order and that equals $128 I did the same thing over here I had to first to define my number of orders per year which is 44,000 divided by the EOQ of 4,000 now and it equals around 11 orders per year multiply that times the eight dollars which is the ordering cost per order and that is eighty eight dollars so as you can see the ordering cost for the EOQ of four thousand are less than forty dollars less than the ordering cost for the EOQ of twenty seven ninety seven and why is that well <laughs> look at this number I'm placing less orders per year and therefore I'm having a smaller number to multiply against the ordering cost per, per order make sense so there's some savings here so we get down to the last one transportation costs and transportation costs is simply the demand times the shipping cost per unit because each one of these costs something to ship and if you notice up here you have a what you would guess you call a, a, a quantity discount because anything that's fewer than 4,000 measuring cups is going to cost five cents per unit to ship, but anything 4,000 and above is going to cost only four cents per unit per ship. So let's do the math. 
For the EOQ of 2797, we have our transportation costs uh, equal to the demand, 44,000 times 0.5 or 5 cents per unit equals $2,200. For the higher EOQ of 4,000, where we do get the discount, it's going to be our total demand, 44,000 times 4 cents per unit, and that equals 1,760. So once again, you see a significant savings here. All right, I've put this table together to compare the EOQs, and EOQ at 2797 has these costs, inventory carrying cost ordering cost, transportation cost, for a total cost of $2,453.87. For the EOQ, you have your inventory, ordering cost, and transportation cost for a total of $2,028. So right there you can see, when I've highlighted here, the EOQ of 4000 is, once you do the subtraction, $425.87 less than the EOQ of 2797 when transportation costs are considered. Okay? All right. Uh, that concludes this particular one. And this is again very, very similar to the one that you'll have to do for your homework. Please read the text, review the videos. If you have any questions whatsoever, please send me an email and I'll be happy to help you. Good luck.